Hello, my name is Victoria Farrow, and I'm glad you're interested in working with shell beans. We're going to talk about how to work with them in general and how to cook a variety of dishes. This video, part one, will include snacks, soups, salads, and sides. Part two, a separate video, will include entrees and a dessert. Full recipes will be provided at the end of each video. Beans are edible plants in the Fabaceae, or legume, family. There are two basic types of beans, string beans that are eaten with the pod on, and shell beans, or pulses, for which only the seeds are usually eaten. We're going to focus on shell beans in these videos. In his book On Food and Cooking, Harold McGee writes that seeds are our most durable and concentrated foods. And that's what a shell bean is, a seed, complete with the stored food needed for its initial growth. So it makes sense that shell beans are nutritious. In their book How to Eat, Mark Bittman and Dr. David L. Katz write that beans are the most important source of protein in the world. They explain that beans are stunningly rich in a wide array of nutrients and in fiber. They speak of beans as being among the best foods you can eat. Beans are a good addition to almost any diet. They are a vegetable that provides significant protein. They include many important nutrients, and as a complex carbohydrate, they can be included in a diabetic's diet. An easy way to capitalize on the fact shell beans are seeds is to sprout them for a nutritious, fresh ingredient any time of the year. Here you see lentils being sprouted in a jar with a screened top. In just a few days, sprouts are edible. I have included some general instructions for sprouting beans in the recipe section. Once you have sprouts on hand, it's easy to use them. On the left, I've added lentil sprouts and chopped scallions to rice for the last few minutes of cooking. I like to add vegetables to rice to increase its nutrition. On the right, I've thrown a handful of lentil sprouts into a salad. Sprouts provide a way of adding beans to a meal without serving a large bowl of just beans. I try to add beans as often as possible to our diet because they have such a positive effect on health. Another reason to eat them regularly is to accustom your body to digesting them. Beans can cause gas in the digestive system because they contain a great deal of fiber and also oligosaccharides, sugars that are difficult for our bodies to digest. There are various promoted products and remedies for these effects, but the best remedy is to introduce beans gradually and eat them regularly. Sprouts are one way of doing that. You may be wondering whether we'll be working with canned or dried seed beans. Actually, we'll work with both, and either can be used in most recipes with some adjustments to the preparation. Both are very nutritious. Dried beans are a handy pantry resource. Be sure they're as fresh as possible. Purchase from a store where bean inventory turns regularly. Avoid bags with damaged beans, ones that are cracked, split, or wrinkled. That is usually a sign of age. And be sure to always sort dried beans before using them. Shell beans dry in the field, so debris and even small stones are very easily mixed with the beans during harvesting. Dried beans are lightly processed to remove debris, but every now and then even a bean-sized stone will make it into the bag. To sort purchased dried beans, I spread the beans out on a baking sheet and carefully go through them all, picking out any questionable beans or debris. Only after that will I rinse them and prepare them for cooking. Most recipes call for pre-soaking dried beans. The easiest way to do that is to soak them overnight. I do that in the refrigerator for food safety. You can also use a quick method. Bring the beans and water to a boil, turn off the heat, 
cover the pan, and leave for an hour. I have to admit that I don't always pre-soak beans if I'm going to cook them in a pressure cooker, as the time required for cooking is already greatly reduced. You might ask, why go to the trouble of cooking dried beans? My primary reason is to avoid the sodium that even low-sodium canned beans have. If you cook the beans with aromatics like onions, carrots, celery, and garlic, the beans are more flavorful and you're left with a great broth. They're also much more economical and you can cook a large batch and freeze packages for future dishes. And lastly, you have great control over how firm the beans are. Beans can be cooked on the stovetop in a pot or in a pressure cooker or in an electric cooker. They can also be cooked in the oven, but they take much longer there, so unless I'm making baked beans, I don't use the oven. I often cook dried beans in a pressure cooker. A modern pressure cooker, kept in good condition, is very easy to use and safe. Mine will cook beans in 8 to 12 minutes that would take hours in a traditional pot on the stovetop. This greatly reduces the gas or electricity used, and because less steam escapes, more nutrients are also retained. A challenge in using a pressure cooker is the fact that you can't open the cooker during cooking to season the beans or check for doneness, which means that it's very easy to overcook the beans. I tend to undercook them in the pressure cooker and then finish them in an open pan. However you cook dried beans, it's important not to add anything acidic like tomatoes or molasses until near the end of cooking, as acidic ingredients make the bean skins cook much more slowly. For years we've been told not to add salt to cooking beans as it would keep them from softening. There's now much debate about that. I salt beans during the last part of their cooking if possible. And any time you add salt during cooking, you generally don't have to use as much, which is always good for our health. It can be hard to determine when beans are done. I always check multiple beans to be sure all are done, as they will vary some in size and therefore in the amount of time required for cooking. You can taste a bean or smash it between your thumb and finger. It should feel and look creamy. If you have very old beans that refuse to soften, you can add up to a half teaspoon of baking soda, but be careful not to add too much or they will become too soft. I always store cooked beans in their liquid, and as I mentioned earlier, they freeze very well. Canned beans are also a great option. They've been around since the early 1800s. Canned beans are in fact dried beans that have been cooked, and dried beans are one of the vegetables that become more nutritious when they're canned. I always opt for low or reduced sodium canned beans if they're available and always rinse them thoroughly if the recipe doesn't call for use of the liquid. Beans are actually pressure cooked in their cans, so the liquid is starchy and can be flavorful. It's easy to convert dried and canned bean recipes Generally, a half cup of dried beans equals one 15-ounce can of canned beans. You may be hesitant to cook canned beans for long, but they actually benefit from additional cooking. If you're making a recipe that uses the broth from cooking dried beans, you can substitute the liquid from canned beans. I should mention that the liquid from canned beans can be used in other cooking especially the liquid from chickpeas, which has very little flavor. The liquid, called aquafaba, is being used by chefs as a plant-based or vegan substitute for egg whites. It took me only about a minute to whip the liquid from these chickpeas. Chefs even use it for meringue. I've often used it in vegan baking and cooking, and it works well. Let's now use dried and canned beans to make a few of my favorite bean dishes that are snacks, soups, salads, sides, and desserts. Remember that cooked dried beans can be used in any recipe specifying canned beans. 
Full recipes are included at the end of the video. And remember that part two focuses on entrees. Let's start with an appetizer or snack item, crunchy roasted white beans. These can be made with dried beans that you've cooked, but I often use canned beans to quickly make the recipe. Drain the white beans you're using, rinse them, and then spread them out on a clean kitchen towel to dry. The drier they get, the easier it will be to crisp them in the oven. I always leave them to air dry for at least an hour. Note that I'm using reduced sodium beans. It's always a good idea when they're available. The oil we'll use to coat them is flavored by adding herbs of your choice, red pepper flakes if you would like a little heat, crushed garlic or garlic powder, and salt. I like to use rosemary, so I've added a few sprigs. You can warm the oil and aromatics in a small skillet, but I often put them in a bowl and heat them in the microwave for about 12 seconds. You can see how the ingredients are melding on the right. Oil and heat extract flavors really well. In a larger bowl, combine the beans with the oil mixture, then spread it all over a baking sheet. I leave the rosemary and garlic on the pan to infuse additional flavor during the roasting. Roast at 425 degrees until the skins are crispy and any interiors are creamy. This makes a very flavorful snack and a healthier alternative to most other snack foods. It's also a great way to introduce beans gradually into your diet. I recently discovered a new way to use white beans in soup. It's in combination with canned tomatoes. This is one of those meals you can make almost entirely with ingredients from your pantry. The one fresh ingredient needed for this soup is garlic. I use a saucepan to smash the cloves. Once the skin cracks, it is easily slipped off. For this recipe, the garlic is further smashed to break it into shreds. I put plastic wrap over the garlic so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. When garlic is wounded by cutting or smashing, it becomes quite sticky. Note this garlic is sprouting. It was all I had on hand, so I did use it but I pulled out the sprouts and discarded them. They can be quite bitter. Because garlic burns very easily, I put oil in a cold skillet, add the garlic, and then turn the heat to medium. As the garlic cooks, I smash it against the side of the pan to further break it up and flavor the oil. Next, I add the canned beans and crushed tomatoes including their liquid. I'm actually making a half recipe here. Simmer until the soup begins to thicken. It will then thicken more when we puree it. Here, I'm using an immersion blender to do that, but it could be pureed in a traditional blender. The white beans will make the soup very creamy. The soup will have a tomato flavor with sweet garlic tones. We really enjoy it. Pureed or mashed white beans can be added to almost any soup or sauce to thicken them. The starchy beans thicken liquids as well as flour or cornstarch, and they're more nutritious. It's another great way to add beans to your family's diet without their even realizing it. One of our favorite winter soups is lentil soup. It's not made entirely of pantry items, but it does feature vegetables I almost always have on hand in my refrigerator. And lentil soup requires no meat or vegetable broth. It's just fine made with water. Onions, celery, and carrots are chopped for the base. I've provided measurements, but they're really just a guide. For this soup, I added some chopped cabbage because I had it on hand. Exactly how much and what you use can be adjusted to what you have on hand and your taste preferences. Next, sort and wash green dried lentils. There's never any need to soak lentils. They cook quickly. Saute the vegetables in olive oil. Add lentils, salt and pepper to the pan and saute briefly. Then add the water. 
Next, add the chopped tomatoes and greens. I used some kale I'd frozen during the summer, but any greens could be added. Simmer until the lentils are soft and the soup is the consistency you want. This is a very satisfying soup. Chickpeas, also known as garbanza or chechi beans, are used in our next dish, a salad with dill and scallions. We'll work with rinsed and drained chickpeas, but cooked dried ones would work just fine too. Drain cooked chickpeas or rinse and drain canned chickpeas. The dressing is simple with just yogurt, mayonnaise, mustard, kosher salt, and black pepper. I always use reduced fat mayonnaise, which has significantly fewer calories and good flavor. I tend not to use no-fat yogurt, but it will work if you prefer to use it. I use a small whisk to combine these ingredients well. Chop fresh dill and parsley. When herbs have tender stems, I don't worry about removing all the leaves from the stems. I just cut off the thick stems at the bottom and chop stems with leaves at the top. Be sure not to skip the dill. It adds a great deal to this recipe. Next, add thinly sliced celery and green onions. Celery adds a delightful crunch to the salad. Combine all and you have a very refreshing salad. Black bean and corn salad is another excellent bean side. I often make it with cooked dried beans and fresh sweet corn, but I've also made it with canned beans and frozen corn. If you are using fresh sweet corn, the first step is to shuck the corn. If you have trouble doing that by just pulling the husks off and removing the silk, you can microwave it for a couple of minutes, cut off the tip, and just squeeze the ear out minus its silk. Next, remove the kernels. It works well to put a small bowl upside down inside a larger bowl. If you cut off the stalk end of the cob to make it flat, you can stand the ear up on the smaller bowl and just cut down the ear to remove the kernels, which will nicely fall into the larger bowl. Chop your other ingredients, tomatoes, peppers, and green onions. Cook dried black beans or drain and rinse canned beans. Chop cilantro and then mix everything together. Cilantro is an herb that doesn't dry well, so I only use it fresh. We're fortunate that it's almost always available in large bunches in the produce section of our grocery stores. Add lime juice, olive oil, and sugar and combine. Then adjust to taste. If you like heat, you can add more jalapenos. Or you can adjust the sugar and lime juice for just the right sweet-sour combination. This is a versatile salad that I find works really well as a contribution to picnics and potlucks, and it also stores well. Another black bean side dish we enjoy is one that's served warm, simmered black beans. If you make it with canned beans and tomatoes, it can be a last minute addition to a meal. Chop peppers, scallions, or onions, and tomatoes if you're using fresh. This is a very flexible recipe. Sometimes I make it with fresh tomatoes and sometimes with canned diced tomatoes. Sometimes I chop the fresh ingredients into very small pieces and sometimes I make them large. The recipe works well with any of these options. First, saute the onions and peppers in olive oil over medium heat until they soften. Add the minced garlic, cumin, and chili powder and cook one minute stirring. The heat boosts the flavor of the spices and the oil will carry them throughout the dish. Be sure to stir and remove from the burner if it cooks too quickly. Ground spices burn very easily. Add cooked or drained and rinsed canned beans the chopped or diced tomatoes, and salt and pepper to taste. Cover and cook over low heat about 10 minutes. I should add that in addition to fresh or canned tomatoes, I've also successfully used tomatoes frozen over the summer. 
Simmered black beans can be used as a side with many entrees, including fish. As shown here, we sometimes use it as a filling for tortillas with fresh vegetables and salsa. We often find ourselves adding simmered black beans with lettuce and salsa to other leftover vegetables for a quick lunch plate. Here we're enjoying the dish with roasted beets and roasted orange and purple sweet potatoes. We hope you found some shell bean dishes you'd like to cook. Recipes follow, as well as general instructions for sprouting beans and tips for cooking dried beans. Remember that at any time you can pause the video to photograph a recipe. This first recipe is for crispy white beans. This is the recipe for tomato and white bean soup. And remember, you can add pureed white beans to any soup or sauce to thicken it somewhat. Here's the recipe for lentil soup, which is made with water and vegetables we commonly have on hand in the refrigerator. This soup freezes very well. Here is the recipe for chickpea salad with dill and scallions and also some general instructions for sprouting beans. This is the recipe for black bean and corn salad, which pairs well with Mexican and Latin American entrees and is a great picnic contribution. Simmered black beans work well with Mexican and Latin American entrees and leftovers make a tasty filling for tortillas. And here are some tips for cooking with dried beans. Thank you. We hope you enjoy cooking these recipes using shell beans. Be sure to watch part two, which features entrees and a dessert. Next are some helpful links. If you enjoyed this video, click on the link below to subscribe to my channel so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Below are links to part two of cooking with shell beans and other cooking videos.